Hello and welcome back to Blow Up the Team. Jeremy here today. We're going to be talking about the Indianapolis Colts and their 2020 NFL Draft. Today with me I got Matt. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, as I don't always, know what to say. What? I could uh, wing it. Wing it. it we'll, we'll be all right. Um, as I always preface, uh, these rankings and these... Can't uh, wait to watch Andrew Luck play this year. Uh, oh, ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Um, yeah, that was a little rough. Rest in peace. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Colts fans. Um, to uh, preface this video, um, just like always, these grades are going to be based solely on the draft. So I'm going to talk a lot about, you know, last year and then guys that they, whatever they did or didn't do in this year's offseason. That is not what my grading is based on. It just has obviously an impact on what they needed in the draft, which is going to impact my grades. So do not take these ratings that I say at the end of the video as an off-seasons rating or off-seasons ranking. That is not what I am doing here. Um, and, of course, um, we don't own the clips to any of the uh, NFL or college uh, highlights that I show. Um, and if I pulled the uh, clips anywhere other than just off straight off of ESPN, uh, the link to the original video will be down in the description down below. So go ahead and make sure to check that out. But with that being said, let's talk about the, well, let's start with the 2019 Indianapolis Colts. Where do I start? The team, after, as Matt alluded to, Andrew Luck uh, had his sudden retirement, the team kind of had no idea what to expect from this season. Um, it, it had a, a promising team. It had shown sparks um, but the team was always kind of driven by Andrew Luck, and it was about Andrew Luck, and it was Andrew Luck's team. Um, and with his kind of early retirement, there was a question of what the team would look like. And I think a 7-9 and nine finish on the season when you lost that guy, and, and you're still trying to figure out where your franchise is going to go after losing that guy, um, you can't be complaining, in my opinion, as a Colts fan. I mean, obviously, it's easy for me to say, uh, but you know, the team managed to put together a solid season. They competed. They showed some promise, they showed some sparks, and they fought hard, and that's what you can ask for, especially after losing a big leader like that. Um, like I said, 7-9, and nine, offensive, offensively, they were 25th in the league in yards per game, 30th in passing yards, 7th in rushing yards, um, and 16th in scoring. So they clearly just had an elite rushing attack last season, um, and as you would expect with the loss of such a great quarterback like that, they struggled immensely uh, moving the ball through the air which is kind of to be expected. You know, T.Y. Houghton battled injuries, which is your star wide receiver, uh, and you lost Andrew Luck, one of the best quarterbacks in, in the league when he was healthy. Um, and to go out and try to make a run at it this next year, you went out and you signed Phillip Rivers to a one-year $25 million deal. I don't know how I feel about this move, personally. Uh, I think that Phillip Rivers has been showing some signs of aging. He's not quite the, the guy that he used to be, but he's still a very solid quarterback. I think he gives you a more consistent option than you had in Jacoby Brissett. Um, and I think it's not a bad idea to take a flyer on an aging star as they're looking for their long-term solution. Uh, like I said, Jacoby... Yeah, and actually, like, like, I mean, like, cause, I mean Phillip Rivers you know, was pretty good just two seasons ago. Like, He was really good. For a long time, and so you know, to, like obviously, a lot changed between those couple seasons, and he's much older now. But you know, give, giving him a chance at one last good run, like I think that I think you know, overall, getting it, it's a it's a pretty safe bet. Like you know, you you put some money on him, you, you see what happens, you kind of just see what you get. If you get bad results, you know, you can look for you know what you're looking for in your next draft. You know what you're looking for for your next big offseason signing. But like taking a guy who's only got a couple years left, maybe one probably left in the league, and you know giving him a prove yourself type deal, I kind of like it personally. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't dislike it. I think it, at the very least, uh, kind of gives you a veteran presence in that quarterback room, uh, which is kind of needed. Should be said, I believe he's only like 27, 28, uh, so he's a pretty young guy himself. And they did sign a uh, sign. They did draft a rookie QB this year, which I'll, I'll talk about later. So I, I don't I don't dislike the idea. Um, I don't know that he's I certainly don't think he's any kind of a long term solution. It's kind of a one or two year band aid in my opinion. Um, and I mean we'll see what he's able to do this year. Maybe he shows some flashes of what he used to be. Maybe he doesn't. But um, I, you don't know, long term for the team. I don't think it really sets you back any to give Philip Rivers this chance. Uh, I don't think that Jacoby Brissett was your guy. 
And so moving him back down to a backup position, I don't believe is that big of a detriment to the team. I don't think he was your long-term guy. Uh, and so I, I, they made they were they showed that they were willing to go out and spend money to be willing to compete, and that's a, that's a big thing in it, in it of itself. Uh, they also signed Trey Burton um, as a tight end too. He's not a bad guy to have. He gives you kind of just a solid guy. He can be a threat in two tight end sets. So trying to make that passing attack as deep as they can. They're trying to get Philip Rivers weapons, I guess. And they also addressed it kind of similarly uh, in the draft, which again we'll get to in just a second. But then let's talk about this defense for a second. They were 16th in the league in yards allowed, 23rd against the pass, 7th against the run, and 18th in the league in points allowed. Again, you're seeing for whatever reason, it's actually kind of funny. They actually finished 7th in the league in rushing yards and also 7th in the league in rushing yards allowed. So um, it, clearly this team was just based around the run. They knew how to defend the run. They knew how to run the ball effectively. And, and so you've got yourself at least something. You've got some fa solid foundation to continue to build off of. And that's going to be looking. That's going to be where they're going to be looking to build off of for next year. They're going to want to expand that passing attack, and they're going to want to be able to to make that uh, passing defense something to something to at least game plan for. Something you have to watch out for. Uh, they also they did trade for a former seventh overall pick, uh, defensive tackle DeForest Buckner from the 49ers. They gave up the first round selection to get him, but He's going to be their starting defensive tackle for them, and it's a, a big improvement as a pass rushing threat than what they had on the line previously. They also signed Xavier Roach, who is somehow going to be a QB, a QB, excuse me, a CB3 or, or third cornerback. Um, so technically a quote unquote backup cornerback, although I expect him to be kind of playing, they'll be probably playing more uh, nickel coverage, which will get three corners on the field probably. Um, and then also signing TJ Carey to as a free agent at cornerback to help fill those depth needs. So they, they saw where their issues were. They saw what they needed to improve on, and they were not willing, again, they were not opposed to going and spending money to bring in guys to fill in where they felt needed to be, the holes that needed to be addressed. And again, they got a solid rushing attack and a solid rushing defense. They just had two gaping holes, and they were both about going through the air. So um, I like the fact that they were willing, willing spenders and were willing to make the moves that they feel like needed to be needed. But with that being said, let's go talk about what their 2020 draft is and see kind of what we think that they're going to do. As I mentioned, they did trade away their first round pick. Uh, however, in the second round, second pick of the second round, they did sign, sign, excuse me, draft Michael Pittman, a wide receiver at a UFC. Um, he's got good hands, great size with, with I would honestly say a, a, like about average speed, nothing super flashy there. Um, he does show potential um, with after the cash, and he just continues to fight for yards after contact. Um, he is fast enough to threaten on deep routes, but he doesn't seem to have that kind of elite second gear to really blow the top off the of coverage. Uh, he can adjust to throw as well, uh, especially over his back shoulder, which is something that is kind of a natural talent that you either don't do or don't have, and it's, it's good to see that he does have it. Um, and as of right now, he is slated as a wide receiver too. Uh, someone that they needed someone to play opposite T.Y. Hilton. I don't know that. He's your guy long-term. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is already, somehow, uh, over 30 years old. Uh, and, again, unfortunately, uh, showing some signs that he could be already becoming injury-prone. So signing somebody like this or, or picking up somebody like this early in the draft um, for the future, something that they can continue to have an impact player on the, on the outside uh, for years going forward is important. Uh, next up, just a few picks later, again in the second round, they went with Jonathan Taylor running back from Wisconsin. He's got good, quick, qu good quickness and top-end speed, um, and he's got good vision with the football, and he finds holes well. Uh, he's fairly elusive, and he can make defenders miss in open field, and honestly, even sometimes in, in close quarters, he just seems to be able to bust out moves and, and find a way to get into the open field. Uh, he's honestly just a threat to pull away any time he crosses the line of scrimmage. Um, he's not exactly a natural receiver, but he has made noticeable advancements, especially last season in this area. Um, his biggest weakness, however, is pass protection. Uh, being able to, to really throw a block for your quarterback. Um, he is listed as of right now, running back two behind Marlon Mack, but ahead of Naheem Hines, who, honestly, Naheem Hines had shown some promise at certain points through last season. So the fact that he's listed ahead of, of, of Hines should show you how, how high they are on this kid and uh, how talented they believe that he really can be. And I, I also believe that he, he, he really fills out that running back core great, and he, he makes for an absolutely outstanding running back core and it's deep 
they, if they don't have to overtax one of their guys because they've got three guys that they can turn around the, and hand the ball off to and they know or throw a screen to, do, just get the ball in their hands and you know they're going to make something happen. So, you know, take some of the tax off of your two lead guys. I, like I said earlier, they did already have a great running attack, rushing attack, so you may think that they may not have needed necessarily another running back, and you're not necessarily wrong. However, I do like the fact that um, they weren't afraid to just go up and grab the most talented guy on the board, and I think that he'll be able to find a way to, to fit into the, to the scheme nicely. Uh, next up, uh, you do have a, your first defensive selection of the draft for the Colts with Julian Blackman, safety from Utah. Um, he's got enough range to cover the field in deep coverage, but he does seem to lack that kind of elite recovery speed. He does track the ball well, and he has good ball skills with having nine picks. Uh, and he's, he's willing to come up and make plays and, and run defense, although sometimes he does get a little overzealous, and he takes sometimes poor angles, which can lead to some missed tackles. Um, as of right now, he's listed as a backup free safety, but I would say look for him to develop and take over from Malik Hooker. He was another young guy drafted in 2017, uh, but he, seemed to, he, had a, he had an injury his first season, and he just hasn't seemed to be able to assert himself in the league since. So... Uh, listed as a backup for right now, but I would say that this is a guy that they could potentially see step up and get significant playing time for them this season, potentially even this season, and if not this season, within the next few years. And then next up, I believe in the fourth round, I told you we were going to get to a quarterback selection. We've got Jacob Eason, or Eason, or pardon me on the last name, I'm terrible with pronunciations, uh, quarterback out of Washington. At 6'6", 230, uh, he's got a great size for a quarterback. That's a that's a big body quarterback. You don't see that very often. Uh, he's got good arm strength, uh, and he can squeeze the ball into tight coverage because of that arm strength. Uh, he does need some time to be able to improve his pass leading on short and medium distance passes, uh, and he can be a little bit erratic with the ball in his hand, uh, but he can move around the pocket well enough. He's not exactly a run threat, but he's not completely immobile either. There's obviously, we were just talking about earlier, you know, kind of needing that quarterback for the future. Is this this guy? I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say, uh, especially coming out of, you know, some of the, I'm not going to say Washington's a small program, but it's not one of the, you know, top five elite programs in the country either. So it sometimes can kind of get hard to accurately pin where one of these guys is going to be, especially if you kind of get back into the, into the mid fourth, fifth round, something like that. It, it's question marks, right? It could be, could not be. You don't know. Um... As of right now, what I can tell you, he's currently listed as your third string quarterback behind Jacoby Brissett and then obviously Phillip Rivers, who's looking to be the starter for next year. Uh, but I do think that you've got a better chance of this of this kid stepping up and being your quarterback of the future than you do of Jacoby Brissett being a long-term answer for this team, in my opinion. I think Jacoby Brissett, again, he showed some promise. He had some flashes, but I, I don't think he's that guy. Um, so taking a flyer on this guy in the fourth round, I think that it makes sense. You know, they lost Andrew Luck. They got to find that long-term replacement. You never know where you could find them. He's got a lot of the intangibles. It's just about a matter of him maturing and, and making smarter passes. And I think that will give it, it makes sense for the Colts here to give him a chance and see what he can develop into. Next up, you've got Danny Pinter, offensive guard from Ball State. Uh, he's formerly a right tackle. No, excuse me, a tight end. And then he transitioned to tackle. And then... He then wind up trying out in the combine as a guard, um, most likely due to his kind of shorter arms, which makes him kind of a little bit of a ill-equipped to be a tackle position in the NFL. Um, he did show out well in the combine, as I mentioned. He has the athletic ability to develop into a good blocker on the interior side of the line. Um, however, listed as a backup left guard for the team already, uh, not having really played the position previously, uh, and and still trying to figure out, you know, he was making a transition from a tight end to a tackle, and now he's going to go from a tackle to a guard. So. He's, he's got a lot of experience all over the place, and you know it's going to take some time for him to settle in. Um, so good young guy to have kind of as a, as a depth chart filler, but it'll be interesting to see what he's able to uh, continue to develop into as the time goes on. Um, if not, it should be a solid. It's a little concerning perhaps that he's, you know, as of right now, you're back up at a position that he maybe hasn't had a lot of experience playing. But I think long term, that's a, it's a good versatile guy to have uh, in the locker room that, you can kind of step in and play multiple positions if you need him to. Uh, next up, we've got Robert Windsor, defensive tackle out of Penn State. He, um, he's he got good length and lateral quickness uh, combined with top-end speed, which makes him just athletically gifted for the defensive tackle position. 
Um, and his best strength is slipping blocks and attacking the ball as a run defender. Uh, however, he is sometimes a little bit inconsistent in trying to shed blocks and, and shed those interior linemen. Um, and he can sometimes give ground. He shows flashes of a good pass rusher, but I wouldn't say that there's anything super convincing that says he's going to be a, an elite pass rusher at the at the next level, which is what the team is kind of looking for right now. Like, as I mentioned, they struggle against the pass. They need those pass rush threats. Um, and I believe for some of those reasons, the fact that he just, you know, he's got a, a lot of the intangibles, but again, he just needs time to develop. He's currently listed as a, as a third string defensive tackle. So um, kind of looking at a depth chart filler here, maybe somebody that they can look to try to develop as the years go on, but I wouldn't expect him to make, barring some unforeseen injuries or unforeseen huge advancements, um, I wouldn't expect him to kind of step up and make any huge impact this year. But as we move into the sixth round, you know, it's hard to it's hard to predict what a lot of these guys are going to do. They all obviously have talent, and, you know, we're hopeful that they'll all develop, but you never really know for sure uh, until you see them play at an NFL level, at NFL speed. Next up, we've got uh, Isaiah Rogers, cornerback out of UMass. Um, he's undersized, but he has good speed. Uh, he's a playmaker, and he's a bit of a ball hawk. He had 11 interceptions with three ran back for a touchdown in college. Um, more importantly, in my opinion, he can return kickoffs and punts. Although he needs to improve against the run, he, he can return those kickoffs and punts, which makes him a valuable uh, special teams piece to add. Um, and, and there's kind of always room uh, for those impact players on special teams. I think a lot of people focus so much on the offensive defense that you forget about special teams, and special teams has a huge impact on the game, and, and you need to be able to attack on all three assets of the football. So, um, Yeah, it, no one ever thinks about special teams because special teams suck. No one ever thinks about special teams until you have three muff punts or, you know, you have a... You have a, a you know kicked a, a punt that's run for a touchdown against the Giants. No one thinks when, about, the, yeah. <laughs> about it until uh, oh god, what's his name? Dane Hester. Yeah, kicked name? it to Deshaun Jackson, and then Deshaun Jackson muffed it, and then ran it back for touchdown. We're not going to talk about that today. That's oh, that wasn't video. that guy. I was just uh, no, that, the other guy. I have told. Oh, Devin Hester. You talk about Devin Hester. Devin Hester. The Devin legendary Hester. like kick return. Oh my god, watching like I I, I I'm not a big uh, you know NFL guy, but watching his uh, highlight reels are just it, nuts. Anyway. Devin Huster, he was a he was a big play waiting to happen. He was never like as a wide receiver, he maybe wasn't the best in the league. But if you got the ball in his hands and a kickoff or a punt return, you never knew. You just like, never oh, yeah. knew. I think it was like his first return for a touchdown, wasn't it? Uh, no, I, he, I don't know. I'm, you're better at some of those kind of. He, he, he had an insane rookie season, and then teams realized, oh god, we need to stop this guy. I know. Back in the day, I used to play like Madden, like 2013 or something. And they had, like, the Canton Grace or whatever, and he was, like, in the league. Like, he was, like, a 99 overall kickoff punt returner. It was, or kick, kick returner and punt returner. It was insane. But, again, back, back to the topic a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Special teams, you know, is kind of an underrated aspect. And if you can get a guy that you know is going to be an impact on special teams, kind of mid-sixth round, that, that's an impact player that will have impact for your team potentially this year. Uh, and, and that's kind of slept on a little bit. So even if, as a cornerback, he doesn't project great into the league, in the sixth round, finding a guy that will be an impact player for years to come for you on special teams is not a, not bad value, in my opinion. Next up, uh, we got Desmond Patman, wide receiver out of Washington State. Um, he's got a great mix of size, speed, and length, um, I, as I believe I just saw, and I believe you probably saw as well. He is at 6'4", 225. So he's kind of that bigger-bodied wide receiver that, that a lot of guys, a lot of guys, a lot of teams are kind of looking for sometimes later in the draft. So just the way that they can kind of, you know, you can put out there, and you, you know, he's gonna have a chance to go and win those 50, those 50-50, those jump balls, which is exactly what his speed uh, and agility have uh, kind of shown him the ability to win those jump balls and and make him a threat to stretch the ball down the field. Um, his hands can be a little bit inconsistent at times, and he is prone to a few drops. Um, but having that guy that, that's a big body like that that you can kind of throw out there and, and, and potentially just give him a chance to just make a play on a ball, um, you can't teach size. You can teach hands to a certain extent. You can teach route running. All this stuff you can teach, you can't teach size. So sometimes just being able to go out there and just get an athletically gifted guy that's got good size, sometimes late in the draft, you can turn into something. You never know. Um, but... Uh, He's a, as of right now, this is a wide receiver six. So you're like in your second set of wide receiving core. So if you were to run two uh, wide receiving sets, obviously he's in the second half of that. But 
Um, I would say I would expect him to get some scattered playing time as they try to experiment to see what he can what he can do at an NFL level. Uh, but more importantly, I would expect him to get a lot of reps with the younger QBs, Jacoby Brissett and and Jacob Eason in in um, in practice and try to build some chemistry for the kind of post Rivers era as they look to transition into into what the next phase of this team is going to look like. So. Uh, you know, getting those reps, you never know. Chemistry is a, is a wonderful thing. It's kind of something you can't measure. Um, and if sometimes some guys just mesh. So, you know, yeah, we have no real idea what he's going to turn into. I think late in the draft to get somebody uh, that's just kind of got raw talent that needs to kind of get ironed out is, you know, something that the Colts need, especially at a position that, again, they're going to need they're going to need as much depth and as much talent as they can get at that position. They struggled all year last year moving the ball downfield through the air. Maybe he, at some point, even if it's not this year, some point down the line, he can help kind of ease that problem a little bit um, and finally uh, Jordan Glasgow inside linebacker out of Michigan um, how do I how do I want to so he played both corner and safety excuse me linebacker and safety in, in over in Michigan but it just felt like I don't know. It almost, it just felt like he was a bit undersized for linebacker, but he also somehow lacks the range to play safety a little bit. But so so you know maybe he doesn't have the physical talents, but he's got the mentality. Uh, I mean the intangible talent, but he does have just the, enough brain mentality and just talent overall to still be impactful on special teams. Again, we're talking about special teams. There will always be room for special team guys that can be those impact players in the NFL. There will always be room for them. And I think that they went out and, and they got another guy like this who will play hard and he can be that impact player and somebody that will kind of look to, to you know, find value in, in that way. So uh, th- those were all their picks. Um, kind of moving into the drafts here, into the draft grade here. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard for me because they have a lot of what I would call project pieces and guys that they have to kind of, we're going to be playing a waiting game, waiting to see what they can develop into. Like, especially Jacob Eason in the fourth round, you know, he's got a lot of the things that you, you know, I'll talk about you can't teach. You got to wait and see. You got to wait and see. You know, it's hard to grade, grade them on a lot of those wait and see picks. So I think they got two surefire impact players their first two rounds. Uh, first round, excuse me, those first two picks uh, early in the second round. But then after that, there's kind of a lot of guys that they've got to kind of wait and try to build on and, and try to coach up. And so it's going to be hard for me. I think that um, in terms of strictly how they did in the draft, I think that, you know, they they attacked wide receiver depth where they needed to. And I think that they attacked corner depth. Actually, uh, they quote unquote attacked corner depth. They added a cornerback to the depth charts. But I think that that's the one thing that they really missed out on was kind of an impact player that for defense of them can play corner. Now, I know they did sign, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Xavier Rhodes. Uh, so it kind of takes some of the pressure off of needing to sign a corner. Um, but I would have liked to have seen them kind of fill in with a younger guy that they can kind of try to hope to fill in as the years go on. Um, but overall, um, they did. They, the other thing I think they missed is that edge rusher. I think they kind of needed an edge rusher bad on this team. Uh, they struggled a lot instead of getting at the passer, creating pass disruptions. Um, and a guy off the edge... Would have helped with that. Unfortunately, they, they were not able to find one in the draft this year. But I think overall, I don't think that they really made any picks that I'm looking at and saying, what were you thinking? I think that they all kind of made sense as a team that's trying to build for the future and trying to figure out where they're going to be. Um, but I also don't think that they really did super outstanding. And I'm like, wow, look at what they did. They really positioned themselves well. I think that is kind of kind of a, I, w- I would say probably B minus to a B. I don't. Uh, I'm not in love with it, but I don't hate it. So I'm I'm kind of in between a B minus and a B. Do you have an opinion, Matt? I think like I don't know. I feel like they got like a fair number, like a like a pretty fair value for what they did. Like they got a lot of depth pieces, but I, I don't really know because like I I'm thinking about it and like I think the draft makes sense when you consider their off season too, and like. Yeah, you know, they they with their first two picks they got a fair bit of value, but like you said, there's a lot of project pieces towards the end there. So I don't really know. Um, I would say somewhere in the B range. I don't think I don't think I don't think, I don't think you know that obviously isn't like an outstanding like oh my god look at all this shit they got in the draft. But uh, I I would say it was still a fairly good draft. 
Yeah, so I think we both could kind of agree that it's a B, kind of in the B range for them. That's what I, that's what I'll kind of put them for now. Again, in three years from now, Jacob Eason could be you know leading the league in passing yards. You could look on it and say what a steal in the fourth round. But you you know, as of right now, he's got a lot of work that he's got to do on his game. And you know, in terms of those first two guys, both of those two guys have potential to be impact players. But I don't necessarily think that either of them are going to be. You know the the steal of the of the draft this year. So I think that uh, a B kind of um, uh, last time I said middle of the road, I got killed in the comments. So I'm gonna steer away from saying that. But I I would say that they were kind of they did what they needed to do, but they didn't do anything outstanding. They didn't necessarily position themselves out like greatly. They did what they needed to do. They filled in where they needed to fill in, and they gave themselves the chance to build towards the future. And Kind of going forward for this Colts team, it's going to be interesting to see what does Philip Rivers do this year. Is he the guy that they needed to kind of put them in playoff contention this season, or is he not that guy? And they wind up back with Jacoby Brissett. So there's there's a lot of questions that are, are going to be going into this this year for the Colts. Colts fans, stay patient. Sorry about Andrew Luck, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know where else to go with that. Do you have uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think that's about it, really. Yeah. So. They're an interesting spot. With uh, that being said, and I guess let's go ahead and wrap this up. Tomorrow, Matt was supposed to be coming back with a White Chicago Sox. White Sox video. Um, however, Matt, go ahead. Uh, I have stuff coming up that was very unexpected, and so tomorrow I'll not be recording. So tomorrow Said it will I'll be... be shoveling mulch all day tomorrow. Oh, that'll be fun. So tomorrow you've got just me back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, and then Thursday and Friday will be Matt doing the White Sox and the Padres. You excited for those two? Kind of. I feel like they're both in pretty solid spots. <laughs> you know, I'm not really sure what they're going to do, but, you know, we, I, I think they have, like, pretty solid... They've both have made strides over the last like couple years so all right so um we've got that to look forward to the rest of the week if you didn't see it already go ahead and check out uh the houston national video that came out yesterday um that matt did um and if you enjoyed the video make sure to like comment subscribe do all that fun stuff uh check out our social media down in the description as well as our discord come over to the discord we're trying to if anybody ever joins, we will, we are fairly active in it. We will kind of respond to anything you guys say. We're interested to hear kind of things that you would or wouldn't want us to talk about or do or, or things like that. Um, again, uh, make sure to check out the clips. The clips video that uh, I used will be linked in the description down below. Um, and obviously, we don't own the rights to any of those clips. And this has been Blow Up the Team, and we'll see you next time. Peace.